Well, I'm back and we have another great lesson for today. And I hope that everyone is keeping uh, cool here in the state of Texas because it is very, very hot and it's not safe to be outside bouncing around without your uh, keeping cool with water and everything. But now we have a great lesson for tonight. So before we get started, I always like to ask God's blessing so that we can uh, have his guidance and reassurance of what we're saying. So uh, please allow me just a moment. Dear Lord, here we are once again coming together to study your word. We want to thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. And Lord, we ask a special blessing upon the bereaved and the sick everywhere, Lord. Lord, we ask, will you please have mercy on us all, on this country, this nation, this world, because we have all sinned and come short, and we're living in terrible times, Lord. But I know that you will answer our prayer. So, Lord, once again, thank you for this opportunity. Let us learn what you want us to know. And thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, oh, I do have someone. Brother Walker is checked in. Good to have you. Sister Ridgeway, good to have you. Uh, I don't see anybody else. I don't know. If I'm not feeding it in. But we're going to go ahead and get started because the Lord said that where there are two or three gathered in his name, he will be in the midst with us. So as we get started, we're going to be looking at a unique lesson that Christ was teaching his disciples. And it's something that we all need to take uh, a special interest in this lesson ourselves. So before uh I talk too much and my time run out. Hello, Irene. Good to have you. Sister Ridgeway. Amen. I'm glad to see hear you see you out there, Sister Ridgeway. We had a good time Tuesday. So let's switch over and get started with our lesson. Now, as you can see, we're still in the Union Gospel Press book. We're still studying on the unit number two, responding to God's kingdom. Uh we're studying, this is lesson number eight, like I said, out of the Union Gospel Press book. And our topic for today is separating the sheep and the goats. And the time is AD 30. The place is Jerusalem. And we're studying out of the Gospel of Matthew, we're, uh, chapter 25. We're starting at verse 31 through 46. And the scriptures I'll be reading are coming out of the New Living Translation, all right? And our golden text is from that 25th uh, chapter of Matthew, verse 46. Now, remember, this is the New Living Translation. And they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous will go into eternal life. All right, our lesson for today. There are three outlines. The first one is judging the righteous, and that's going to be coming out of verse 31 through 36. The second one is evidence of righteousness, and that's verse 37 through 40. And then our last one is judging the unrighteous, and that's verse 41 through 46. Now, as I said, this is a very interesting lesson that we'll be studying tonight. And it really made me, Sister uh, Ridgeway, pay attention and realize what, uh, what the Lord was teaching them about this judgment that's coming. But, you know, a lot of times we think we are, uh, we, we're all good and we're doing so good, we won't have to uh, be judged. But all will be judged. Hello, Sister Brazil. Good to have you. So as we look at this lesson, now somewhere where I research uh, Clint and Sister Ridgeway and Irene and Sister Brazil and whoever else out there, I don't see you. 
uh, they were saying that this was not a parable, but it was a description of a future scene of the judgment after the glorious second coming of Jesus Christ. So now, some want to say it is a, a parable and some say it's not. I'm going to say it's the Lord's word and he's phrasing this like this so we can understand what's going to take place. Like he was trying to teach his disciples and all those around him of what's uh, going to happen. Now, this didn't happen while Jesus was here on earth the first time. And so let's get started with our lesson. Let's switch over and look at our first outline. As you can see, we're, uh, our first outline is judging the righteous. And this is verse 31 through 36. And it reads, as you can see, I have it on the screen. So this is the new living. Hello, Sister Baldwin. Good to have you. It says, verse 31, but when the Son of Man come in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will set up his glorious throne. Verse 32, all the nations will be gathered in his presence and he will separate the people as a shepherd separate the sheep from the goats. Verse 33, he will place the sheep at his right hand and the goat at his left. Verse 34, then the king will say to those on, on his right, come, you are blessed by my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. I believe the King James says from the foundation. And Verse 36, 35, I'm sorry. For I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you invited me into your home. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you cared for me. I was in prison and you visited me. Now, Let's remember that Jesus is given this parable, or some say not a parable, but he's captured their attention and he's letting them know where he says, he, look, he's, Jesus is talking about himself. But look, see how he phrased that first uh, scripture? But when the Son of Man come in his glory. Now, Jesus is on earth during this time. He's teaching, preaching healing the sick, raising the dead. But in this reference, he says, when the son of man come in his glory, who is he talking about, Sister Baldwin? He's talking about himself in all his glory. Because see, when he was crucified, died, was buried and rose and spent a few days here on earth, he went back to glory. Well, when he comes back, Sister Baldwin, Sister uh, Brazil, and, and Brother Clint, he is going to be in his own glory. And glory, he's going to be uh, the king himself, the son of man, is coming in his glory. You know, those that like to dress up on Sunday and come on, Sister Ridgeway, and have big, they, 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 got, they got it dressed all up. Well, just think when our Lord comes back, in all of his glory, how marvelous he's going to look, how great he's going to, he's going to have a shine about him that no spotlight can shine on anybody here on earth. So this is what he said. And look, and all the angels will be with him. See why he was here. He only had his disciples that were with him. And you know, some of them, they denied him, one denied him and one uh, betrayed him. But when he comes back, there will be no betray uh, betrayal. There will be no backstabbing, uh, Brother Clint, because guess who's coming with him? Uh, it says, and all the angels are coming with him. Don't you know that those angels are going to protect this, our, uh, our Savior, our King, because he's coming to rule. He's not coming like he came through Mary. He's coming with all honor and glory that the Father has given him. And to protect and guide him, he's going to have a host of angels with him. So 
those that don't like him in the, from the first coming, they won't be able to do anything to him. Hello, Renee. Good to have you. So that's what he's telling them. He says, and he's, and then he will sit upon his glorious throne. He's going to have a throne here on earth, you all. It's not like the throne that uh, the King Charles received when the, when the uh, queen died. No, his throne is going to be the rule the earth. It's not going to be just a fancy chair where someone sits and just points out. Then look at verse, uh, our next uh, verse. Hello, Jackie. He says, and all the nations, that all the nations, you all, that means everybody, not just Texas, not just uh, the United States, not just Europe, but all the nations will be gathered in his presence. That's a lot of people, you all. That is going to be it. Only Jesus can rule and be king over all the nations, you know, other countries and all that. He's going to have control. He rules them all. And then look what he says. And he will separate the people. He's going to separate the people as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goat. Now, when Christ separates, that's a great separating. There's going to be those on the right and those on the left. He's using this example of a shepherd by placing the sheep on the right and the goat on the left. Because somewhere else I read where it was talking about at night, the sheep herd, he would, the, the sheep could mingle and stay where they were. But the goats, he had to separate them because they could not uh, tolerate much of the cold air where the sheep could tolerate it and be comfortable and not be frustrated. It makes me think about those of us that are the sheep. Guess what? We are, we can tolerate it. We are going to be comfortable. But in this case, the Lord is going to separate us. You know, some while back, we studied about letting the wheat and the tares grow together. Okay, during this time, he's going to do the separating. Y'all hear me? Anybody out there agree with me? This is what's going to happen. He says, all nations will be gathered in his presence and he will separate the people as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goat. We can't separate people. We are not, we do not have the authority to say who can come and worship with us and who can't worship with us. No, the Bible says, we studied this, let the weak and the tares grow together because there will be a great separating but it won't be by our hands because, see, we don't know what's good and what's bad because we're not so good that we can condemn someone else. And then look, he says, and he will place the shepherd on his right and the goat on his left. The sheep, you hear me? The sheep and the goat. And then he says, look, then the king will say to, to those on his right. Now, the sheep, y'all, are the ones that were followers and believers of Christ. The sheep, y'all, are the ones that, that never doubted Jesus Christ. Are you a sheep? Are you a goat? Now, the goats, they, they did what they wanted to do. They had no, no, no regards for nobody. It was all about me, myself, and I. Whereas a sheep, a one who is doing what Christ told us to do, and that is caring for others, morally, not, not just, uh, I'm going to do it so I can get this glory for myself. No, no, Sister Baldwin, we ought to be Christ-like. When he said, when he got down there and he was talking about how he, you was, when I was hungry and you fed me, I don't want to get ahead. Let me go back. Verse 34, then the king will say to those on the right, guess what? When you are a sheep, you are a servant of Christ. You believe, you serve faithful, you've gone out of your way to help others and did all this. Guess what? He's going to say, come on, come, come, come on, uh, uh, come on, uh, Sister Baldwin, you are one of my sheep. Come on, you are blessed. Look, it says, you are blessed by my father. Inherit the kingdom that was prepared for you. It says, at the creation of the world, King James says, the foundation. Do you know Christ? God had this plan already, him and Christ. 
that when the foundation of the earth was placed and hung out in space, he knew that there were going to be those that will work and not work for themselves, that considered others that didn't have much. This is what he's talking about when he gets down there and he says, for I was hungry and you fed me. He says, I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. He says, I was a stranger and you invited me in your home. And then he says, I was naked and you clothed me. He said, I was sick and you cared for me. Listen, I was in prison and you visited me. Now, as we see when we get down a little bit further, we're going to see because the disciples are asking, well, well Lord, we, we, we never saw you hungry. We never saw you naked. We didn't. When, when did you go to jail, Jesus? Come on. Am I right, Inez? Inez Willis. When, when did we see Jesus go to jail? You know, and this is what's confusing to his disciples. But Christ is letting them know you are the chosen one. Your works, not even your faithfulness, can make you become the sheep. You become a sheep by moral uh, intelligence by you having concern for others other than yourself. You know, think about it. How many of us grew up in a home where it was a lot of us, but mama cooked enough food. I know where I lived on little old street back there. I tell y'all that all the time. Mama would cook a big old pot of beans, greens, and fried two or three chickens. And there's only three or four of us in the house. But she always said, then somebody gonna come by and we got enough to feed them. How many of y'all had parents like that? Even though you would think that they was overcooking, but they thought about somebody else. Those are the sheep that he's talking about. You fed me when I was hungry. You don't know who you feed. You don't know who you're helping. Now, I'm not talking about those that are out there that are constantly begging and living on the street because they don't have to be there, you all. They don't have to be there. We have a society that will give food to them give them shelter, but there might be somebody that you know, and they are struggling and you know it. What are you, what are you going to do? You're going to let Tundra, you're going to let them be hungry. Now, Tundra was raised by, her mama was raised by a, a mother like mine. They, when they cook something and they knew somebody was hungry, they tell them, come get a plate. Who are they serving? That's what Jesus is saying. When I was hungry, you fed me. We don't know who we are entertaining when we are helping other people. And that's what he says. Now, look, this judgment is not the great white throne. This, this is going to happen immediately when Christ comes back the second time. What we're talking about. The, the one judgment that is spoke of in Revelations 20, 11 through 15. This will take place after a thousand year reign of Christ Jesus and his saints. But this judgment, when he calls all the nations together, this is going to happen instantaneously when he comes back. Okay? Now, that's when we were talking about the, uh, we were talking about the righteous, the righteousness. You know, those, you know, there's one thing to go about in talking about you're righteous and you live in any kind of life. No, be careful because the way you live, it comes through your works. And just like the Bible has told us, you can't work your way into heaven. No, you can't. Uh, uh, you think just because you work in the church and and you are on the usher board or you sang in the choir or you are uh, you the custodian or the financial person? No, not those work. Those that job needs to be done. Your works is what you do on the outside of God's building. Your personal works. Now I didn't say go judge nobody and you you think that you all good and that. No, that 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 sounds like those goats we gonna get to. We serve because Christ served us and we are Christ-like. If we help a stranger or even if we help someone we know, we are serving Christ. Don't ever think that you're doing this uh, to make yourself look good. If you're going to do it for that reason, don't do it. Am I right, Sister Rich Ray? Somebody answer me out there. I see you, uh, Sister Brazil. Okay, now let's let's get to our second outline because I don't want to go over our time. Now, as you can see, we are talking about the evidence of righteousness. Now, remember, 
Righteousness is not talking about how right you are. You think you're right all the time or you think that, I don't know, I'm right. No, you're not right. Anybody that say that, they wrong. They wrong, they wrong. We're talking about the righteousness. And this is talking about the evidence, your evidence. What you do will speak for itself. Okay, let's look at this. And this is verse uh, 37 through uh, 40. And it reads, Then these righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you? Remember I said that? They didn't see Jesus hungry. No, Jesus took a little boy's lunch and fed all them multitudes. But this is the disciples' way of thinking. They're thinking in the flesh and not spiritually. He says, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and we fed you or thirsty and gave you something to drink or a stranger and showed you hospitality or naked and gave you clothing? When, when, when did we ever see you sick or in prison and visited you? See, the disciples, y'all are really just, they, they not, they, they understand it, but they confused. And then look, look, he says, and the, this uh, new living says, and the king will say, who is the king, everybody? Who, who, who is the king, uh, Laverne uh, Johnson? Who is the king? He says, and when the king and the king will say, I tell you the truth. When you did it to one of the least of my brethren and sisters, you were doing it to me. Isn't that something? Isn't that, isn't that just, Sister Brazil, that's just, that just opened my eyes and let me know. When you're doing something, be careful who you're doing things to. Are you doing it? to promote yourself? Or are you doing it because you see a need? You have compassion. Christ has compassion even on us today. And some of us are not worthy of his compassion. But in this instance, he's telling them that uh, when you did all this and the disciples turn around and ask those same questions, but the Lord had to tell them. In other words, no, you didn't see me physically in prison, Inez. I I've never been to jail, y'all. I don't know. I can't, I can't vouch for that. But I know somebody that went to jail and needed me to come help them. And, and I did it. I did it. And I didn't do it because uh, I thought I was better than them. It was because I loved that person and I cared for them. And I did what I could to free them. This is what Jesus was telling them. No, Jesus didn't go to jail. Jesus was never naked. He was never hungry. Uh, but he's telling them like he's telling us. But when, and the king will say, I tell you the truth, when you did it to one of the least of these brethren, not just your household, the least, somebody you don't even really know. Yes, you can help those you know. And you sometimes we have to be careful when we help them because a lot of times people use your goodness and they'll keep riding on you. But in you'll know, the Lord will tell you, okay, you didn't help them enough. You don't have to keep doing that. Because we know when people are taking us for a ride. But in this case, he's telling the least, the people that you don't even really give, you know, you're really not thinking about them. But if they come up and they need help, you openly, you open up your heart and you go out to help them. Because you never know. Someone has helped you when you were down and out. Someone has Lift, has said something that lifted your spirit to, kept, to help you go on just a little further. Guess what? That's exactly how Christ wants us to live. And he's telling them, the least of these brothers and sisters. So it's not just one somebody, but the least, the ones who somebody else count out and you see some good and you want to help them. That's who Christ talking about. He is talking about that. And this is what he's given an example evidence, evidence of the righteous, evidence. When you are speaking the truth or you do good, it does not mean, uh, Renee, so spicy, that you got to go out and pass out $100 bills to everybody you see. No, 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 no. That's not it. It's the little things that mean much in the eyes of the Lord. Just little things. Yeah, we do big things. You know, sometimes we can all get together and, uh, 
get a hog and put him on the pit or some chicken, and we invite everybody in the hood to come on and eat. That's just part of us celebrating with each other. Because if it was if it was someone like I said when I was growing up and they were hungry, I we had neighbors that would come by when they knew my mother had, was frying fish on a Friday. Sometimes they'd come by and just get one little piece of fish and a little piece of bread. My mother never turned them away. How do I know if that person had eaten all day? But they had something. This is what Christ is saying about being the least and not giving to the greedy. Because, you know, there are those that live off of the poor and keep right on living and never help no one. Okay, Uh, let's see. Now we're going to get to our next outline. And this is the last one I want to. Watch my time. So, as you can see, now he's going to talk about, he's judging the unrighteous. The unrighteous, you all. Listen, let's let's look at what this uh, scripture says. He says, then the king will turn to those on his left. The left are where the goats are. uh, Or in others, those that didn't really uh, they believed in Christ, but they didn't practice what they said. They was just in the in the group. And it says, to the left and say, away with you, you cursed ones, into eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his demons. For I was hungry. He's using the same language with them. But listen, he says, I was hungry and you didn't feed me. I was thirsty and you didn't give me a drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me into your home. I was naked and you didn't give me clothing. I was sick and in prison and you didn't visit me. And then look at verse number 44. He says, then they will reply. Now we remember we're talking about the ghosts. Lord. When did we ever see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and not help you? They they know they haven't helped nobody. But look, look at it. They sound, they trying to sound like they sheep. You know that in the midst of us, we got goats and sheep. So the goat know how to act just like we act. And then he says, and he will answer. I tell you the truth. When you refuse to help the least of these, my brethren, you were refusing to help me. And they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous will go into eternal life. Now here in our last outline, Jesus is talking to those on the left, on the left, over here at the left, you know, the right is sitting. Those are the sheep. Those of us that are called out are sitting in honor. Here on this side are the goats. Now the goats heard what he said on the right and how they responded. You see, theirs is a little different, but they trying to act like church folks, y'all. You you know, sometimes we, that's that wheat and tares growing together. There are people that come in and we worship and we praise. They got everything down packed to the T, but they're Hearts are far from it. They're there to entertain us or to be seen by us. They need that. Uh, they want to have that position of honor. But on this case, Christ is letting them know where he said, because see, the goats are the ones that they didn't really believe. They were in it for themselves. They did nothing uh, morally right for other people. It was all self-centered. It's all about them. They they were determined that they were going to, they do it even today, y'all. They are in the churches, they're in the uh, our political arenas, they're in the government, they're in the school, they're everywhere. They're only in it for themselves. And they will do this. And when the Lord returns, he's going to separate. He's going to do it. There's only two separating. They're not going to be three places. No, just two, the good and the bad. Remember that, just two. Some people said, I read somewhere where they were thinking that it was more than just two, maybe those that was in the middle. No, there's no such thing as the middle. You're on the right or you're on the left. There's no such thing as in the middle when it comes to Christ and following him. You're either for him and you're following his instructions or you're against him and pretending. We got a lot of pretenders. I believe uh, P. 
pastor always talks about the great pretenders. They so good to y'all, we don't even know the difference in them. But then when he's telling them this, and then he's going to cast them into eternal punishment. Now, as I looked at this lesson and I read it, uh, hell was really from the foundation of earth was for the devil and his angels. It was never intended for man. But when man sinned against God, guess what? It, there's no in-between heaven and hell. You either go to hell or you're going to heaven. And there, some people seem to think that there's going to be a time where you can be forgiven or no in that judgment time where maybe they'll go to in the middle and then they have time to make their way to heaven. No, there, Sister, uh, uh, Sister uh, Ridgeway, there, there is no in-between. There's the right, there's the left. There's eternal in heaven, the kingdom of God. There's an inheritance for us that have held on and, and did everything according to God's will. Then there is hell, eternal punishment. I mean, there is no joy. People will say, well, I, I don't mind going to hell. We're going to party all the time. Mm -mm, you better think again. If it's hot now, just here in, in the state of Texas where we are, and we can't hardly stand the heat, don't go to hell. Because it is, it is eternal punishment. It's not going to be a party, y'all. It's not about having a good time. No, it's eternal punishment. And that's where these goats are going to go. Check yourself. Don't, don't be a goat. Uh, commit yourselves. You have time now to turn it all around because Christ has not come back yet. But I don't know whether he's coming in the morning or he's coming uh, when I uh, say good night. But guess what? He is coming and he's going to come and he's going to judge the nations. That means the whole earth, everywhere. It does not matter if you are in uh, Africa, you are over in Korea, you in China, you in uh, Russia. He's going to rule all the nations and he's going to separate us. And that's what this lesson is all about is talking about the separating. There's not going to be some in the middle. I keep uh, going over that. No, there's not going to be no in between. You either in or you out. And we, uh, you should work on that and stay focused because Christ is coming back. And I don't want him to say, depart from me. I know you not. I want him to say, well done, thy good and faithful service. Amen. I hope that this has been a blessing for you all to understand about this sheep and goat separating, which is really, it says the brethren men, but that includes all of us. So don't, don't get it twisted and don't, don't think that I believe it was somewhere else and I'm going to get, I'm going to finish this. I wanted to read this about that 144,000 because there is a practice of religion thinking that's all that's going to heaven. No. No, 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 no. That, it, that's God when Jesus was teaching that. That is another part doing that great tribulation. This, this is not, this first judgment is going to happen as soon as he come. But then he's going to reign for a thousand years. Reign mean he's going to constantly be trying to, those that like give him another chance before he condemns all of them. And he's talking about that. He says, one, let me read this and I'm going to be through. He says, one can assume that even with the greatness of all of these, that's the whole nation, that there will be many people, perhaps three billion or more, still remaining on earth after Jesus returned in his power and glory. And at the end of the last seven years, period, among those will be 144,000 who were specifically sealed and preserved through the great tribulations. Y'all see that? The great tribulations uh, that that's talking about in Revelations 14, 1 through 5. As it is fair to ask, what happens when all these people, perhaps 3 billion or more, who survived the great tribulation, and the Armageddon, the judgment of the nations, answers this question. And that's our lesson. I hope that 
that clears it up about that 144,000 because that's being quoted out of content in what the Lord refers to. So, as I say, good night. May God bless and keep you. And if this lesson has been a, a, an insightful one for you, hit the thumbs up button and let the, the platform know that we are uh, we're doing this and it's being uh, reaching other people. So, again, good night. May God bless and keep you. If you're in a state where it's 100 and above, drink plenty of water, stay cool. And until the next time, may God bless and keep you all.